businesses are trying hard to get back on their feet and reopen safely as they emerge from the circuit breaker. We are fully behind them and will further strengthen our support for businesses on the three Cs, cash flow, cost and credit. I will help businesses on the first C, cash flow, through the Jobs Support Scheme or JSS, which supports firms in retaining and paying their workers. When the circuit breaker was imposed, I increased the wage support under the JSS to 75% of the first $4,600 of wages in April for every local employee. When the circuit breaker was extended in May, I extended the higher level of support to May. This is because most firms had to either stop operating or operate at a much reduced level. The temporary increase in support was planned for only two months. Coming out of the circuit breaker, businesses will not be able to return immediately to pre-circuit levels of operations. Hence, I reviewed the original JSS schedule with fellow ministers and will make three enhancements to the scheme. I will also provide support for businesses for the second C, costs. During the circuit breaker period, we provided a foreign worker levy waiver and rebate to support businesses employing migrant workers that had to suspend operations. Some businesses will not be allowed to resume operations on site immediately after the circuit breaker is lifted. I will extend the foreign worker levy waiver and rebate for up to two months for such businesses. This will include all businesses in the construction, marine and offshore and process sectors. The waiver will be 100% in June and 50% in July. The rebate will be $750 in June and $375 in July. To help businesses manage costs in these challenging times, the government will defer the planned increase in CPF contribution rates for senior workers by one year from 1st January 2021 to 1st January 2022. The CPF transition offset scheme will similarly be deferred until after the higher contribution rates take effect. Many businesses have also given feedback that while the GSS provides support on wage costs, they are facing difficulties with rental costs. This is especially tough on SMEs. Given that businesses will need more time and support to get back on their feet post circuit breaker, we will now do more. We will significantly add to the support for rental costs earlier provided through the property tax rebates for 2020 in the unity and resilience budgets. We also expect landlords to do something, and that will be legislated. First, I will provide a cash grant to offset the rental costs of SME tenants to be disbursed through property owners. Taken together with the property tax rebate, the government will, in effect, offset about two months of renter for qualifying SME tenants of commercial properties and about one month for qualifying SME tenants of industrial and office properties. The grant will be disbursed automatically to property owners from end July. This grant will cost about $2 billion. Details are in the annex. Second, the Minister for Law will introduce the new bill next week. This will mandate that landlords contribute by granting a rental waiver to their SME tenants who have suffered a significant revenue drop in the past few months. We deliberated on this matter very carefully. The government does not ordinarily intervene in contracts after they have been entered into. However, as the Minister for Law had explained in his second reading speech on the COVID-19 Temporary Measures Bill, in exceptional situations such as this, the government needs to intervene through legislation with temporary targeted steps to safeguard the economic structure for the common good. The new bill will also cover provisions on temporary relief from onerous contractual terms such as excessive late payment interest or charges. It will also allow tenants to repay their arrears through instalments. If the bill is passed by Parliament, SME tenants in commercial properties who have suffered a significant revenue drop will benefit from a total of four months of rental relief shared equally between the government and landlords. Other SME tenants in industrial and office properties 
will also be given some relief. SMEs also already benefit from a temporary relief from rental payments obligations till October. Together, this will provide substantial support on rental costs for our SMEs. The government will also continue to lead by example in supporting our tenants. I'll provide two more months of rental waivers for commercial tenants and hawkers. The total rental waiver will, be, will now be four months for commercial tenants. Storeholders in hawker centres and markets managed by government agencies will get a total of five months of rental waivers. For industrial, office and agricultural tenants of government agencies, I'll provide one more month of rental waiver. They will now receive a total of two months of rental waiver. We also ensure that these measures flow through to subtenants, many of whom are SMEs. This will dovetail with measures for SMEs being studied by the Minister for Law. Let me move to the last C, credits. We introduced and enhanced various financing schemes, such as a temporary bridging loan program and the enterprise financing scheme in the past budgets. The take-up has been high. The schemes have catalyzed $4.5 billion of loans so far, benefiting 5,000 businesses. This is more than three times the amount of loans catalyzed for the whole of 2019. MAS, together with banks, finance companies and insurers, has also introduced relief measures. This helps individuals and SMEs to continue servicing their loan and paying for insurance coverage. Notwithstanding this enhanced support, business leaders, including at my virtual meeting with the SBF and the Future Economy Council, told me that in this environment, some promising startups in Singapore are finding it hard to raise capital and develop their businesses. Left unaddressed, this could set back our efforts and result in a loss of good jobs and good companies. It is important to preserve what has been built up in our innovation ecosystem so painstakingly over the years. To bridge this financing gap, I'll provide financing support for promising startups. This will help them sustain their innovation and entrepreneurship journey. I will set aside $285 million to catalyze and crowd in at least another $285 million in matching private investments. This is in addition to the $300 million I had set aside under the Unity budget for deep tech startups to gain better access to capital expertise and industry networks under the startup SG equity. These startups can also make full use of the SG United Traineeship Scheme, which I'll cover later, to bring in graduating students with deep interest in the fields they are exploring and build up our talent base. 